Hey folks, AJ the CEO here, and we got ourselves another product here. This is for another install, and you know I want to at least bring it to you so you can actually see everything to see if it will fit with your ministry. But this is the Epson Powerlight L735U. This is a laser projector that has edge blending, which I am interested in playing around with, and um, comes in white or black. We got this one in black to match the ceiling that we're doing at TCF Ministries. Um, it has 7,000 lumens, so it should be more than bright enough um, for in there. And we're going to have these connected to um, some SDI cables and convert it over to HDMI and all that other fun stuff. But let's go ahead and open it up and let's see what's inside. All right, so thankfully these actually came and we actually have two of these because um, we're going to be setting these up so both of these are split and run together. So this is going to be interesting. And we're going to start the install of these on Tuesday. Well, I was going to do it on Monday, but I got to take care of a flat tire. <laughs> All right, so let's get in here. Now, we've installed maybe about seven laser projectors at this point in time. Um, I believe this is my first Epson. Um, we've done a lot of Sonys, a lot of Panasonics, some LGs. Um, so really liking the fact that with the laser, you don't have to worry about bulbs and all this other stuff like that. So we got our documentation and I'm gonna pull this out because I have had a bad habit of trying to go through one of these things. So I'm opening this up for the very first time. I don't prep this stuff and y'all are seeing me do this live. All right, so let's see what's on this side. How are we gonna open this up? Oh, right there. So what is this? All right, so these are power cables, our remote, and it comes with some batteries. And I have no idea. I think, okay, this must be a cover that goes on the back to hide from connection cables. That's what my assumption is. But I am going to put that back because I am definitely not going to use that right now. And I want to make sure I can get this thing back closed. There we go. All right, and this is the projector. Oh. Gotta be careful. The other one is on the floor right over here beside me. So the main thing is um, when you pick out of your projector, you want to make sure that the lumens, the light generated from the projector is more than the ambient lighting in the room. Now, the beautiful thing about TCF is, the beautiful thing about TCF, there, is, there are no windows in the sanctuary. So the sanctuary is completely sealed. So we don't have to worry about stray light or anything. The, the lighting inside the sanctuary is completely controlled. So when we did the laser projector, like at um, Gates of Faith, they have a bunch of windows, um, but where the placement was, it wasn't a lot of ambient light that got to where the projector was. At Antioch, it's kind of the same thing, but all their walls are white and it had a whole lot of light bouncing around. And I went with the suggestion that they wanted. If I had it to do again, I would have got something like uh, 7,000. I think Gates of Faith was 5,500 lumens and that works perfectly fine. Um, Antioch was 5,500, I believe. It works fine, but again, I would have like to have been brighter. I think 
where else? We did something in Charlottesville. It was two projectors there, one in the Fellowship Hall. No, three. And then we replaced the two in the sanctuary, put one in the Fellowship Hall. Then we did some at Spring Creek, a bunch of them. All right. So now I want to be careful of how we look at this. I don't want to tilt it on its lens. So let's zoom in here so we can see all of our I.O. ports. And I'll just hold it up so I can set it flat. I don't want the lens to touch. All right, so when we look at here, we have a USB-A. Hopefully that has power, because that's my intention, is to try and pull power from for the SDI to HDMI converter from there. I've done that before, and it says right there, it says two amps. I don't know if that's gonna be enough, but we'll try that. Um, we have a USB-B connection for service, our network port, have a VGA port, which I think is still funny, um, has a, another computer monitor out, two um, 3.5 millimeter audio ends. We have an audio out, so if something was sent here, audio can come out. RS-232C connection there, HDMI out, which is interesting. I guess we could have daisy chained these. Um, two HDMI ends and HD base T. You have a security anchor right here. We're definitely gonna use that to secure that to the ceiling and one of the steel studs. Um, in the ceiling, so if anything happened, that would catch that. We got our controls and all that other fun stuff right there. There's our, oh, let me zoom out so you can actually see. Filter right there. And we got our lens cap and all this. This is a long throw projector. Um, I think it should be fine. Um, they're actually going with um, HD paint on the wall. Um, Cause just looking at the screen, they didn't want to go through that price. I mean, that direction and that price and all this other stuff. So we're going to put this up, get it all calibrated when we get it at the church, get the edge blending and then measure off the ideal size of the screen once that is done. Let's take this off. Got our lens cap, of course. Other side here, if we flip it over, cause it's going to be mounted like this. We got our multiple locks there. And looking at that extra piece, it looks like I was right. That whole piece clamps onto the back, I guess, to cover this up. We may actually use that. I mean, again, in this scenario, we're only gonna have the power going to it and one short HDMI cable and a, um, Network cable, why <laughs> couldn't you spit it out? But SDI is gonna convert over to HDMI, I'll plug in network cable that's gonna give it, and then power. That's the only thing that's gonna be connected to this, and it's gonna be flipped upside down. All right, so let's go ahead and plug it in, and I'm gonna hook it up to the network, and I wanna see what we can see, and I need to get my other camera so y'all can see what I'm looking at, and maybe I'll point it at this wall over here. I was gonna put this in the garage, <laughs> and I have more than enough um, black um, blank walls so I can actually run this. I might take it upstairs and put both of them side by side and start playing around with the edge blending. Um, actually, let's do that. Let's take this upstairs. I have more room to do what I need to do with this. So let's migrate this upstairs. Alrighty, folks, we're upstairs in the kitchen. We got this set up against this solid wall. This is where we actually did the other projector. So let's go ahead and get this thing powered on. This sounds like the PlayStation starting up. All right, so we definitely got to get this calibrated. Let's go ahead and turn these lights off here. So you got your two knobs up here to adjust, vertical and horizontal. Let's bring this up so we can get past the kitchen table, all right? And we're definitely gonna be way farther away here. So we're gonna try and get the biggest image we possibly can here. And right now it's most likely having me adjust to get the right placement of our screen. So again, we're going to go through this configuration again once we 
get there because it is going to be upside down. It's actually going to be um, that one when we actually um, flip it around. But we'll just set this right now. I did run an Ethernet cable, so we're connected. Let's set our language. Um, date and time. I believe that's right. Yeah, I think it is. I know the time is definitely off. Let's go ahead and adjust that. It is actually 834, which is strange. I would have thought it would have pulled from the network, but maybe we can set that. And I'll change that. I think we're at five. Oh, well, we'll come back and set up all this other stuff. Hopefully I can just pull the time from a name server. Continue adjust the shape and position. Again, we're not gonna do that now because we're kind of fine right here. And that's it, it's looking for sources. So let me set this down. And we're gonna go through the menus here and see what options we got. Uh, let's go to home. So we have our main set is looking for a computer. We're going to use um, HDMI. I don't have anything connected to it right now, but that is fine. Uh, we have our LAN. I want to go through settings. So let's see what we see on here. Um, color mode, select presets, colors, adjust volume and speaker. OK, I want it more options than that. Um, I'll set this to dynamic for right now. Um, let's go ahead and okay, that's multi projection. I'm wondering when we have both of them set up how that would work. Now, I'm really surprised, I would have thought we would have some more options on here. So we can connect um, over LAN. So if I bring my laptop down here, maybe we see it on the network, we'd be able to connect to it. Um, screen mirroring, you probably send the phone over to that as well, HD base T. Like that, I do have an adapter, so I may actually use that. That would be easier for me to connect something to for right now. Um, and then split screen. I wonder how that works. So you can have two screens. I guess it's going to pull from your inputs or from all four inputs. Yes, kind of interesting. Um, let's go back to our menu. All right, this is the menu I went from. I guess that's different from the home one. All right, so we have our brightness. We have all our image stuff. That's our frequent, frequently used items, dynamic, all the basic stuff that you will probably want to go into. But again, here, we're going to change this because we want. OK, I guess we can't change that. I thought that was going to be like, what is the default um, connection that you go to signal I.O. All right. So do you want to do AV output? Do you want to do audio output? You got all the other settings here that you can go through. A lot of this, we're not going to use any volume in any way, shape, or form with our stuff. Um, so when this is set up, we're always going to have that being turned off. This is where we can do a fixed installation in our settings. It is, it is going to be a front projection. This is where we can change. Um, we're actually going to do 16 by 9 for ours. All right. So that's good. And again, this is going to be connected to an ATEM um, 2ME constellation. And we have a bunch of PTZs that are going to be hooked up to that. All right. So our, we're now through our display settings. Do you want to see blue on startup? All this other fun stuff, messages, menu rotation, filter notice, auto search. I might actually turn that off. Direct power on, whether it automatically turn on the projector when, when you supply power to it or not. Um, I don't know. The power outlets for these are going to be in the ceiling, so I have no idea how 
that's being routed to a switch or it's just dedicated power on. So we'll see. Um, sleep mode on selects the period of inactivity. Um, I don't know how that inactivity is going to be because I think the SDI to HDMI converter always sends something. So we might have to play around with that. Um, let's see what other stuff do we have through here? Basic settings, nothing really jumps out. And again, um, I have all the lights on here in the kitchen, so that looks fine. I'm actually going to move the PlayStation over here. So it looks like wireless information. Can this be connected? I don't think, I don't think this will let me actually um, connect wirelessly. Let me get out of here. Um, back to our network. Let's see. Network settings. Set a password first. I don't want to set a password. Um, so we'll come back to that. Just settings. Wired. So we're getting an IP address from my network, so that's good. Let me look at that one more time. And that's 45. So maybe we can see what else is there. Um, selects an ID for this projector so you can control it only from a remote. Okay. Might have to look through that. And this is the main feature right here that um, the ministry specifically wants. Um, edge blending. Adjust the overlapping image area to create one seamless image. So we're going to have two projectors with one source going into it. Um, but we want it to blend as if it's the same. So we're going to have to play around with that to see how we can get that all set up and everything. Um, so we definitely want to have that on. And this is where we're going to have to go through the settings of all that stuff when we have everything turned on. All right. Memory. And if we need to do a firmware update. So let's see. And it doesn't do it over the network. You have to actually connect a storage device. So you can't do it over a network in any way, shape, or form. Okay, really straightforward. Um, let's go ahead and change our input to HDMI. That's HD base T. All right, that's HDMI. So what we're going to do is hook up some type of um, device here so we can actually see what it looks like. Maybe the PlayStation. Let's do that. All righty, there we go. We got the PlayStation connected. And I was actually, I was actually <laughs> looking at some YouTube videos on here. Let's see what type of Let's do some Horizon Zero Dawn. Let's see what that looks like here. And I'm going to pull back a little bit here. Get as far back as I can here on our image. And see what it looks like. Now, again, this is with all the lights on here in the kitchen. And it's about 8 o'clock, 8.30. So... Let's see, let's, let's load up a game, shall we? And see what it looks like on here. Again, the audio is coming through the projector. This is something that we will ignore. Now, <laughs> I don't know how this will work though with um, image blending, edge blending, excuse me, with both of the with both of the projectors hooked up cuz I don't have a way to hook up both of them well maybe if it's the HDMI out maybe that would work so i mean looks beautiful now if i turn the lights off it's going to look a whole lot better here so again i still have lights on in the other part of the upstairs but pretty, pretty cool. 
So uh, I'm, I'm saying this is this is really cool. So before I get too happy, let's go ahead and break out the other projector and let's see about playing around with this edge blending and see what we can do. Alrighty, so we got both of them set up right now. As you can see, we got them set up here. So let's go through and look through this, this image blending and see if we can get a understanding. Uh, let's see if we can get an understanding of how this stuff works. Let me see if I can get you in a good position here so that you can see. I am gonna, what I did is the HDMI out from this one is what is feeding this one. I don't know if that's it or not. Again, this is when I said I should have read the manual, but let's just see. We're gonna go through the menu. All right, folks, so got a, got a little bit of blurring on here, but that's just because of the leveling. But we do have our image is between running off of two projectors now. So we got our edge blending. So the idea is inside the menu, there is a setting here. If we go to menu and let me go up here so you can actually see when we go into the menu, first we need to set the HDMI out to pass through. Um, and then we link that and we say how many projectors are connected and which one is which. So I have this one as number one, have the other one as two. And then in edge blending, I can turn the guide on to show where my stuff is gonna be. So I can line up to those lines or I can come up here and do a pattern and then we can just match the pattern on this one as well. So if we turn the pattern on here, and then the idea is that we match these. So obviously something is off on our settings. So let me back up out of here and let's go back to our menu and make sure, I think my scale is the issue. All right, so now let me go back on this one and make sure the scale is not an issue as well. We back out. All right. So now, now it's just a game of trying to get this stuff sized right. All right, so that's as close as I'm gonna be able to get it right now. We're gonna dial it in better when we're actually there at the church. Let's go ahead and turn off our guides. And probably I'll do a different color to make sure we can really get it straight. And then let's see what it looks like running through both. Now I need to figure out how this is gonna be because we have a direct connection ran for each projector. Um, now they're going to be using ProPresenter, so it should be able to work the same way, but all right, let's see. Wow. That actually looks good. And again, that's running through two projectors. Let me back it out just a little bit more so you can see. That's really good. Horizon, um, Horizon Zero Dawn, well, Horizon um, Forbidden West is looking very good. Now, again, at the top, you see that menu at the top is off by a little bit, but the images everywhere else look very, very, very good. Um, now, I guess I could bring my laptop down here and then see what it's going to look like with some presentation software. Again, we still have a lot of space to the left and right, so it's most likely just some other settings that I don't have right in here so we can you know really utilize the entire image of the projector um but again looking good the projector is looking nice um and i think that's mainly about it for right now 
All right, so the next thing is, I said I was gonna be done, but then this is the following day. I actually got my laptop hooked up to this and we got ProPresenter set up. So they, instead of doing the edge blending directly through the projectors, you can actually do it inside the program. And I'm using some connectors here. So first we gotta pick out our screen and that is going to be the left one right there. So now we got it set. Now, if I come in here and whatever assets that you're running, you need to make sure you go into inspector and have it. Uh, I want this to scale to fill so it'll fill up everything. Now, I think I skipped over it real quick. We're going to go back here into our screen, our configuration. And then see we pick our monitors but if we click the middle this is where we can do edge blending settings that show where that gap is in between and you'll have to dial that in and for the most part so if i pick this so there we go so as you can see in the middle there's a little bit of playroom because of the words are overlapping so we have to work on that but looking really really nice and i picked a couple of other graphics here so like right there you can see that's off so let's see if we can dial that back in if i can get my mouse over here so i think there we go because i have actually um spread these apart some more so it should be side by side so now if we go here still just a little bit um, with the wording again this is a demo so i have to play around with the word some but this is just one of the nature of the things that needs to be dialed in um, and it could be that you know since i have these not overlapping it could be that i just don't use that feature at all but Again, that looks really, really cool. And put another graphic up here. So that's real slick to do that. And I'm trying to keep my kitchen out of here because I didn't wash the dishes. <laughs> but that's about it. Alrighty, so that's pretty much about it. Like I said, this was a follow up from the next morning. Um, really looking forward to installing these and then playing around with the edge blending. Like I said, once these are in its final position and completely leveled, then we'll be able to really dial that stuff in. There is a software component as well too, but for whatever reason, um, it looks like the download was airing out on me because every time when I tried to run it, it kept saying that you need administrative rights to run. I don't know what that is. I'm, I am an administrator. It won't give me an option to run it, but anyway, it's a software component that I believe that you can actually set up edge blending as well too. But when we get there to TCF and set up everything and have a computer and in its final positions, I'll re um, I'll go over that again, if that's the option, but be on the lookout for the install. We're going to be starting back um, later this week to put all the products that we've been reviewing in the last couple of videos, all of those are going into CT TCF and we can see the end result of them. So if you like this type of content, appreciate a like, consider subscribing, hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry. Thanks for watching folks. This is AJ. Catch you on the next video later.